What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out incredible weapons you didn't know about. This is by Tech Zone. I will leave a link, as I always do, at the very start of the description down below. Please go over there, give it some love if you haven't already. Um, let's check this out. Let's see what weapons they're talking about. Um, I love, as you all know, new tech in the military, but I'm also very hesitant on new tech being introduced into the military for obvious reasons that I've gone on over, over plenty of times in the past. Uh, but yeah. I'm excited to check this one out. I really, I really like seeing new weapons. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We're so close to half a million subscribers, guys. We are so, so close. Other than that, let's shut up. Let's pull this up and let's have a cheeky peek at what's new. Some cool music going on here. Oh, that's a, oh, what's that? What was that? Let me turn this up a little bit. Let's pay a visit to USFA, a company many people know for its clones of the cult single-action revolver, but it also has its own developments. Yo, what is that? It almost looks like a mini M M MP90. Is that what I'm talking about, MP90? P90. It looks like a mini P90, doesn't it? It's a striking example. By the way, what? in its time, it was the basis for a whole new brand, the Zip Factory. The weapon is chambered for 22 LR, a low power version that's very popular for recreational and competitive. Let me turn subbies on real quick. This is bizarre. Shooting. Thanks to the abundance of plastic, the gun weighs only 15 ounces. The main feature is the Holy. two cocking handles. The first is the Zip Low. Wait, did he just say two cocking handles? 15 ounces. The main feature is the two cocking handles. The first is the zip load. You press and the bolt grabs the first cartridge from the magazine. When you remove your finger, the cartridge enters the chamber. The second is zip restrike. You press and the firing pin is cocked without the cartridge being taken. However, the public didn't like this gun. So, product. That has got to be one of the strangest looking guns I have ever seen. Like, at the end of the day, there's a reason people haven't innovated too much on the way that a weapon, especially a small weapon like that, cocks back. Because it doesn't, like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Do you know what I mean? I feel like having something where you got to put your fingers near the front, near the barrel to cock it. Like, you got to put your fingers right next to the barrel. What happens if you have a freaking ND? Do you know what I mean? Holy! <laughs> production of the zip restrike was stopped, but you can still find it on sale if you're interested for two hundred and forty dollars. Yeah, nah. The fact that you've got to put your finger at the front there, I think, is dreadful. Dreadful. Cool looking weapon, though. This gun would look cool in a spy movie like the James Bond films. This revolver was made in the 80s, and its main feature is the double caliber. In order to switch from 22LR to 380 ACP cartridges, you just have to change the cylinder. Yo, what? We can change caliber? The capacity is five or three rounds, and the weight of the revolver is about 20 ounces. The cylinders are completely enclosed into the gun, and there are two barrels and two firing pins. Yo, that's actually really smart. That's actually a really, really good idea. I don't know if it would work, if it works in practice, but it's a good idea. However, in order to implement this, Yo, the look loading at that trigger. speed had to be reduced. Yeah. It's known that not many of these rifles were produced. So now- You see the trigger? That's so weird. Nowadays, they're more of a collector's item. Yeah. But you can get one for about $250. That's so weird. It's like a toy. Look how much, look how much tension you've got to bring it all the way back before you get to the main part and shoot it. That's crazy. What a weird weapon. Many years ago. Oh, wow. Look at this. Wait, let me go. Let me, let me. Look at length of that bad boy. Many years ago, the Browning Company presented the Buck Mark semi-automatic pistol, and it was a success. I've never seen that before. The gun before. has been produced for more than 30 years. Whoa. While pleasing its fans with different modifications. Now. Yo, that's sick. That's so cool. I love that. The gunsmiths surpassed themselves by turning the pistol into a rifle. 
Unfortunately, according to the Browning website, this rifle is no longer in production, but you can still buy it. For about $520, buyers get a gun with a 10-round 22LR magazine, the weight of which changes from version to version. The carbon version, for example, is... Yeah, that's, that's actually really cool. Everyone knows the, the problem with handguns is the accuracy. The accuracy is just not that good at a handgun. All of a sudden, you've got a stock on it like that, a longer barrel that you can hold and secure more tightly. Like, all of a sudden, you might come that little... Uh, that adds quite a bit of accuracy to it. That's re I really like this design as well, the way that it's made. It looks like it's a very, very light rifle. Um, very impressive. $520, buyers get a gun with a 10-round 22LR magazine, the weight of which changes from version to version. The carbon version, for example, is just over three pounds, while the stainless version Whoa. is 4.6 pounds. The reviews highlight good balance and comfort, but the design is clearly not to everyone's liking. At the end of the day, like, at what point is it worth just buying a rifle? Like, like, I get it. It's a really cool design. And look at the size of that scope, and it's a handgun, really. That's hilarious. But, like, at the, what point do you just say, I'm just going to buy a rifle, like an actual rifle with a higher caliber? I feel like it's a bit, it's defeating the object a bit in it, really. What do you think? Because it's obviously not going to be as good as a, an act, a real rifle with a bit with a higher caliber. Cool weapon though. Very we interesting have concept. Seen a rifle pistol, but what about a rocket launcher pistol? This weapon was made in the United States back in the 1960s. Of course, it was fucking made in the United States. A rocket launch pistol. Of course, it was made in the U.S. Where else would make that? Of course. <laughs> rocket launch pistol I, I could just see it in the conference room guys what ideas have we got today rocket launch pistol <laughs> it's unknown whether its creators were inspired by the space race but they used jet technology for it the goal was to create a silent weapon with high efficiency for this purpose they used solid propellant mini missiles of 13 by 50 millimeters and if you look what? at the numbers the resulting weapon is really quiet and deadly. The problem was accuracy at a range of 320. Oh my God, did you see that? <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Best weapon ever. 128 feet. The dispersion reached 7 to 10 feet. Experts Ooh. even started working on rockets with stabilizers, but were caught off guard by new caliber restrictions. It turned out to be expensive to change anything, so the production of these jet pistols was cancelled. That's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. That's amazing. That is absolutely brilliant. Terrible in practice. Amazing in idea that's what it's all about right there guys <laughs> a classic weapon from russia the ags 30 automatic grenade launcher yes it's a lightweight about 37 pounds powerful and reliable model for infantry special forces and airborne support maximum rate of fire is about 400 rounds per minute and in the event of overheating, the barrel can be quickly changed for a spare or doused with water. The sighting range is up to Oh six my god, look at them. Look at that. Can you imagine someone rocking up to the range? Lads, check what I've got. And pulls out them thick boys. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> 1,890 feet, and the ammunition used allows you to hit targets even behind cover. It can be brought to a carrying position and back in three minutes. The wow. grenade launcher was developed in the 1990s and adopted for service in 1995. Oh my and is god. effective for both offensive and defensive operations. That's just mental, that, in it? Like, I just, I, where did people come up with these ideas? Oh, that grenade launcher, we should make it automatic. <laughs> and I've seen the automatic uh, underslung grenade launcher that uh, we have in the military, the the big one. I've, I've I've not shot one. I've shot an underslung grenade launcher on the SA-8, one of the best weapons I've ever shot. I thought it was so fun to shoot. I just can't imagine it being automatic. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sheesh. 
The Ruger series of rifles is a real legend among gun connoisseurs. For example, there's even a holiday celebrated on October the 22nd to honor the 1022 version. No wonder, as the Ruger was developed in 1964, and as of 2015, more than 7 million rifles had been made. And Classic. So this is, I'm guessing this is going to be like a new version that they've made or something? Oh, it almost looks like a shotgun, the one above it, though. The number of upgraded versions is pleasantly surprising. For example, the one you're seeing on the screen is called the Desert Tech Trek 22 and is 7% lighter plus 10.25 inches shorter than the original. Whoa. The design is quite interesting. I don't know. You can't beat the classic design, can you really? Like, it's a classic. It's a classic. I just don't know whether they should touch it. Two plastic halves are hooked onto the receiver and barrel. All parts of the gun are fixed with 11 hexagonal screws. The gun is also equipped with a buttstock, which accommodates two spare magazines. And Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Two spare magazines in the butt. That sounded wrong. <laughs> that sounded wrong. Two spare magazines in the butt. <laughs> The comments are going to be having a field day with this, aren't they? Christ almighty. My a long Picatinny rail, which is criticized by some customers for the two-half design. The price for the upgrade kit is about $300. That's so a lot of money for the casing for an upgrade. Next up nah. is a device from Switzerland. It was made from scratch for a variety of tasks. In addition to competitive shooting, self-defense, and training, this... Switzerland, is it? Is it like a little Swiss army knife? The little knives come out the top of it, and you got a little pair of scissors and a little nail file. Can you imagine? <laughs> Semi-automatic submachine gun also helps law enforcement agencies. The fact is that the legislation of many countries restricts police access to fully automatic weapons, but they still need to fight crime somehow. Yo, that barrel's so quick. And having your hand that close to it is sketch, but you gotta be good at it. You gotta be good with that rifle, that SMG to, to use it. Creators of this weapon highlight its high density of fire, original design, and ergonomics. Oh, for I like example, that. It'll be convenient even for motorcycle police units. This version has a 9mm caliber and a magazine capacity. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like that. A lot. 30 rounds. The gun weighs 5.1 pounds and is about 15.8 inches long when. Yo. The way that that unfolds is sick. Caliber and a magazine capacity of 30 but comes out the gun weighs and the magazine just pounds and is about 15.8 inches long when folded. And the Picatinny rail allows you to complement it with the necessary upgrades. For example, that is absolutely sick. That's the best one on this on this so far. I think that is unreal cool. A sight, but opinions are divided. Many reviews note that the existence of such weapons is the result of legislative restrictions and mm. obstacles, rather than a well thought out work of the designers. I get that. That makes total sense. Like people are saying, well, you could make a better one if we didn't have these stupid restrictions on it. I totally understand that. Totally understand that. But to work around the restrictions and come out with something like that is impressive. You know, obviously, I don't know how well it shoots, but design wise, amazing to just work yourself around them frigging reg regulations. Another compact yet rapid fire weapon from Switzerland. Interestingly, it's also useful for the police, special forces, private security agencies, and even protectors of high- Switzerland, they love their rifles over there, don't they? They, they can't get enough of shooting in Switzerland. But they also have like a really weird culture behind it. So I feel like it's less um, polarized. Like in America, it's very polarizing, isn't it? And they have a lot of issues, obviously, in America with weapons, unfortunately, when it comes to mental health and a bunch of other things. And you just don't hear that in Switzerland, which is weird because there's so many weapons there. It's just a different culture, isn't it? It's very strange. Ranking officials can use it as well. The history of this weapon is quite interesting. The first version was invented in Austria, but because of the laws and the extremely unsuccessful promotion, it failed to achieve success. Therefore, it says MP9 on it though. 
War. The rights, drawings, etc. were sold to Switzerland, where the gun was refined and oh. sold very successfully, including to law enforcement officers. Oh, that's sick. You see how it's got a little pouch to catch the brass as it falls out. That's really cool. In terms of design, we are looking at a three-pound submachine gun with a fire rate of 900 rounds per minute. Yo. The magazine capacity is 15 to 30 rounds, and you can use 9mm by 19mm ammunition. You can That's a sick weapon. The Switzerland's coming out with some of the good ones here, aren't they? You can shoot with one hand, and if necessary, the gun can be upgraded for various applications. For example, by installing a silencer and advanced optics. The price of the gun is about $1,500. 1500 To be fair though, if I had the money and I was splashing out, I'd get something cool like that. If I had $1,500 laying about and access to weapons, which I don't in the UK, but it's something, that's, that's something, isn't it? You know what I mean, I don't know what I'd use it for. You wouldn't use it for anything, would you? Apart from just shooting down the range. You're not going to go hunting with that thing, are you? But what a cool weapon. I don't know. I, I bet there's some people in America that are like, I'm going, I'm going elk hunting with this thing. <laughs> I guarantee there's people in America that would do that. Holy. Next up is a movie star. The Be FMP90 night, yeah. submachine gun has appeared yeah. in many films and shows, including Doctor Who, The Island, and Stargate SG-1. Oh, Stargate SG-1. Do you know, I always used to take the piss out of my dad for watching that show when I was really young, but it's, it's legitimately really good. Dad, if you're watching... It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, and I'm sorry for taking the piss out of you when I was young. It's it's actually a really cool show. <laughs> However, it is a real weapon, popular yeah. with special forces in Spain, Belgium, France, and other countries. The first thing that catches the eye is the magazine. It's a patented version with a capacity of 50 rounds. What's more, cartridges are laid horizontally and rotated before being fed into the chamber. It's a really unique weapon. It's it's almost as if it's one of them weapons, as soon as you see it, everyone knows what it is. Like an AK, like a MP5, like a RPG, you know? Like, it's it's a weapon that you see and you're like, that's, that's that. It's like the M1 Grande. Do you know what I mean? It's so easy to distinguish. The gun uses 5.7 by 28 millimeter SS-190 ammunition, which is especially good for fighting in confined spaces. The trick is that the bullets almost don't ricochet, but are able to penetrate Kevlar armor. The weight Whoa. of the submachine gun is about 6.6 .6 pounds. However, it has its disadvantages. It is five to seven times more expensive to produce than something like the Uzi. Oh my God, the rate of fire is mental. Absolutely mental. How many have we got left? We've got three left, guys. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. We're close to half a million. Let's do this. It's a 50 BMG bullet for flare gun. The author of this experiment explains. What? We should note that such a cartridge is comparable in length to a dollar bill, and the weight of the bullet alone is about two ounces. For Surely that would just shatter the gun, though. Aren't flare guns mostly made out of plastic? Fortunately, the author was smart enough to arrange a remote shot. Yeah, I thought so. This is destroyed. There's Where did the round even go? Nothing left of the flare gun, and viewers joke about disposable guns and suggest that the author make a steel flare gun and try again. Disposable guns. Oh my god. Where did the round go? That was dangerous. That was actually legit really dangerous. Oh, it's right there. Next on our list is this sniper rifle, which has been selected by the Canadian Armed Forces for their missions. It hey, the Canadians are really good at shooting snipes. They're really, really good. It's known that the Finnish manufacturer has committed to deliver 229 units by the end of 2022, and Canadian experts... Yeah, when I was this video, came out in 2023. Interesting noted that the rifle can provide the armed forces with greater flexibility. When developing the model, great emphasis was placed on versatility and modularity. As always, I always, always, always talk about that on this channel and how important versatility is, how important adaptability is when it comes to the military. And that's probably why this weapon's been chosen, because the more you can modify something, the longer it's going to last in the military and the cheaper in the long run it'll cost. 
Not to mention different operations, different places, incredibly important to change up the rifle in ways. So, owners can switch between cartridges by changing the barrel, magazine, and bolt. Three calibers are currently available, 308 Ooh. Win, 300 Winchester Magnum, and 338 Lapua Magnum. That's really cool. The gun cool. weighs 13 to 14 pounds. Other features include a fore-end that works as a heat shield around the barrel, a tool-free adjustable stock, and back plates made of patented material for more comfortable shooting prone. The price is around that's really, really, really cool. I'm actually interested in what the price is right here. Around eleven and a half thousand dollars. Oh wow, eleven and a half thousand dollars! Oh my days, that's mental. It just shows how much money is in this type of stuff, isn't it? Holy. Cool rifle though. And finally, a little treat. All right, we're gonna get a crossbow at the end. I'm down for this. I love me a. I'm I'm a big fan of bows. Do I like a crossbow? I do like a crossbow, and I've got a crossbow actually. My mum and dad have it from when I was really young. I had a crossbow, and it's still in the shed. I might get it and hang it up behind me here. I think it would look so cool in the background of my videos. Hey, mum and dad, if you're watching, bring it over next time so I can put it on my wall, will you? It look cool as hell. For crossbow enthusiasts, this beauty uses the patented Verticoil cam system and is the shortest in the manufacturer's line, only 18 inches long. The main audience are hunters, but other people will also be interested. What's the point in hunting with that? Like, I feel like if you're gonna go bow hunting, use a real bow. I want you, if you're gonna go bow hunting, use the long English bow. That's what I want you to use. None of this compact bow crap. Get yourself the English longbow and go hunting. I dare you. I want to see if it's been done. That's what a real man does. They use the English longbow. <laughs> the manufacturers provided a removable buttstock, anti-dry fire system, and a new three-dot reflex sight. You know what? If I was living in America, I'd get one of them. Also, it fits the popular Garmin sights. This modification will come in handy because it allows you to hit a target at a distance of about 300 feet. The crossbow comes fully assembled and set up, and the price for it is $1,525. Yeah, if I was living in America, I'd buy one of them. I think that's sick. That's so cool. Hella dangerous, but really, hey, really stop cool. Stop being lazy. It's time to use that brain of yours. Welcome to Brain Time. Incredible facts. What? We're getting, a, we're getting an incredible facts at the end here? What? I like this channel. From the past, the present, and even the future. The power of nature and wild animals. Amazing facts and unsolved mysteries. You'll find all this and much more here. Subscribe now. You won't regret it. All right, guys. Go over to their channel. Give it a subscribe. That was a really, really good video. It's called Tech Zone. I will leave a link in the description, like I always do. Genuinely really good video. You should to totally go check it out. Um, what was I most impressed with? Anything from the Switzerland area seemed to make incredible SMGs. Really like the crossbow at the end. What else did we have? Um, the sniper rifle was incredible, overpriced. Um, yeah. So anything from the Swiss, the sniper and the crossbow. I'd totally buy them if I could. They're amazing. They're amazing. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We are so close to half a million and we're going to have a party. So subscribe if you're not already. Other than that, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.